mentioned that you've known Peter before over 32 years. Many Nigerians are barely coming to see him, to know him, some a couple of weeks, if not days, some months, and some a couple of years, less than two, three years, except people from Anambra probably who knew him as their governor. Bearing in mind the number of years you've known him, what is it you're going to tell Nigerians and the world about him that they do not know? All right. Um, in him, you have a different kind of leader. Something and someone who is exceptionally gifted, but completely different. A leader who does things differently. A leader who won't tell you what you want to hear, but will tell you things honestly as they are. It's often said that a great leader is someone with the capacity to take his people from where they are to where they should be. That's exactly Peter B being described. He's very frugal, so you can be sure that the purse strings will not be toyed with. He is very confident. You've seen that all through the campaigns and uh, when he was here a few days ago in, in England. He is someone that does things differently. Uh, the key to success is to do things, to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. He's doing things differently. There's something you would have noticed about him throughout this campaign. He has never attacked any candidate. None. He has never uh, sought to say anything negative about the APC candidate or the PDP candidate or NMPP or indeed any of them. He will never do that. That's not him. That's what the other people are doing. They call him. They give, he, he gives them sleepless nights. But one thing they forget, and they should see, and let me help them here, is that this guy is a Teflon candidate. Nothing sticks. Indeed, the more you think you are attacking him, the more you're promoting him. Oh, as an example, what happened in Anambra State, you know, we've just been talking about, that was the singular thing that sold him to the rest of the country. Because Nigerians up north now started saying that his candidature was not a Southeast conspiracy to snatch power. Oh, so this is what they are, his people actually think of him. Let's embrace him. That's why you see in Joss, there's so much frenzy, never seen in politics in Nigeria. That's why you see in Kaduna and Mina, and there are more to come. Other places will shock you. You saw that in Akwaibom, in Uyo. So, we are looking at a man who is not tainted by corruption, because if the president is not corrupt, his wife is not corrupt, Margaret certainly wouldn't even begin to uh, think of that, let alone uh, be that way. Uh, that's Her Excellency, the wife of the incoming president by his grace. That he doesn't have time, he has enough. In fact, he has a record of being the only senator, sitting senator at the time, that refused to buy his own lodge in Apple legislative quarters. The rest bought. He said, no, these assets are national assets. I can afford to buy this, but I will not. So he didn't buy. What does that say about that? He has no time, disdain for corruption. Peter B has been a, a governor for more than out of office for uh, more than 10 years. No, no case in EFCC for, against him. Uh, you know, the ICPC, I mentioned it earlier. So what, do I, what am I saying about uh, the candidate uh, of Labour Party, Mr. Peter B? In him, you have a man that I've known for over 30 years who has always been passionately talking about Nigeria, frustrated about Nigeria, angry about Nigeria, knowing what the problems are and that the solution is very simple, leadership. Have a man that is honest with the people, honest with himself, elect him as a leader, he'll fix Nigeria. And that's Mr. Peter B. Have you ever seen him angry? Honestly, no. No, not at all. How he does it, I don't know. Uh, if he's angry uh, when he's alone in private, he's a human being, that'll be okay. But I've never honestly seen him angry. In fact, 
the closest, yes, the closest I, I saw him to getting angry was when Dino Melaye was you know, sort of distracting him at that town hall meeting. Okay. Yes, I, I think I remember that. That, that's, that was the only time, and not because that was a public one. Privately, I can't remember. And that was unlike him. I don't know why you know, he even spent any second of time replying to Dino unnecessarily. It wasn't necessary to do that. But that's, that was out of character for him. I never see him angry. Yeah. So if, when this election is won in the next couple of weeks, what will be the things you would expect him to do in the next 100 days and in the, ne in the first one year? Okay, uh, the first thing is that when you're in a hole, the best way out of that hole is to stop digging. First of all, whoever wins, and I believe it will be him, and I pray it will be him, uh, I say whoever wins because I'm not God, it's my wish that he wins and he's doing enough to win and the people, and I believe this election will be free and fair, that's why I'm confident he will win. I believe the president Buhari wants to leave a lasting legacy uh, of conducting a free and fair election, and if that election is free and fair, Peter B will win it, I have no doubt. A landslide, I have no doubt at all about it. And that's what I believe will happen. So, um, on the assumption that he wins, um, the first thing will be to stabilize the polity. Um, come up with um, the right appointments. Because any serious leader uh, will know that he cannot lead alone. You don't know it all. So, I expect him to appoint round holes, in round pegs in round holes, and square pegs in square holes, as we say. Go beyond the people around him now, including myself. Go beyond us to source for the right Nigerians who can come in with the right expertise, with a good track record to help rescue our nation. Like I keep saying, this is an altruistic support from me and from the people you see around him. We want, first of all, to win because if you don't win, nothing can be done. But he will have the free hand. He is not beholden to any uh, godfather or beholden to any of us working tirelessly to get him elected. It's not about him. It's not about us. What I expect him to see is to have the right Nigerians, both at home, within Labour Party, outside of Labour Party in diaspora, come back to rescue a nation that is failing. Thank you very much. Chief Ben Etieba. Thank you very much for being my guest today. Thank you, and I'm delighted to have uh, been on this platform. Thank you for having me, and uh, anything that um, I can do to actualize uh, this uh, vision for Labour Party and for Mr. Peter Obi and for Nigerians, you can count on me that I'm, I'm here to, to, to do that. Thank you very much. <laughs>